Greetings. Welcome to the innovation series. In this series, I will be uploading four paths. Originally, this was designed for a short term program at Manit Maulana Azad National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. I had promised the participants there that I will uh, put up the slides and my yakking on uh, that because there were some things I could not cover in detail uh, because as anyone who has listened to me knows once I start I kind of don't end. So here um, is the first part. I have noticed one thing that when I am talking to people I seem to be more at ease. It doesn't matter how many people I am talking to, to one, to four, four hundred, doesn't matter. But if, if I am talking to people then I seem to talk reasonably well. When I am talking to camera I don't talk that well but still I think it's okay but when I'm narrating when I'm talking only in the you know in the microphone and the camera is not on I think I'm kind of pathetic so apologies but I need to show you these slides hence I'm just narrating in the background it's gonna be kind of boring all four of these. However, if you give me a chance to deliver it to you in person, I promise you it will not be quite that bad. Anyway, so here's the first part and see you again at the end of the first part. Innovation part one, creativity and innovation. A disclaimer first, nobody can really teach anyone anything. The best any speaker can do is to really assist the listeners in thinking. The first part of this innovation series is about creativity and innovation. The agenda for the part one is going to be mainly definitions and then examples of creativity, addressing the why of creation and innovation and examples of some innovators. But before we get there, the definitions and even before I share with you the reason why I think we need to define things we must ask the fundamental question, why should we define anything at all? Why need we define anything at all? To demonstrate that, let's just look at the picture here. It looks like an elephant, but it ties into a very, very old story, a story that is often told to demonstrate one of the fundamental principles of Jainism that is Anekantavad. So in case this picture doesn't make a lot of sense let's look at this one. Now does this one make a lot more sense? Probably not. Probably we need to recount the old story. So long 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 ago there was a small town in that lived six blind men and of course a lot of sighted men and a lot of women and a lot of children and a lot of other people who are probably not men or women or children and in that town what wasn't there was an elephant so one fine day a Mahavat came along with his elephant and 
when he came in, the whole town was a buzz about this new animal, new strange thing which they had never seen earlier. And everybody was telling these six blind men different stories and then these guys said, well, let's go and find for ourselves what uh, this new creature is like. So they went there and while they were in the process of figuring out what that strange creature is, each one of them caught hold of a different part of the animal. The animal as we know is pretty big and each of them uh, caught hold of a part before they were shooed off from there. When they came back, the guy who had caught hold of the tusk would swear that an, elef an elephant is like a spear. The one that caught hold of the body would say no, 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 it's like a wall. The one who caught hold of its tail said, no, it's a rope. The fourth one that caught hold of one of its legs said, well, you're all wrong. It's like a tree trunk and so forth. Now, the point that we are making here or that the person who told this fable first is telling that different people understand the same thing differently and despite one doing one's best one still has only one particular view of any reality what we must be capable of appreciating is that while we know our part of the reality well we do not know that part of the reality which is not available to us and therefore while we may be right in part we are also likely wrong in a large part so we must never be a kantabadi we must never say that i only am right and everyone else is wrong what we must say is that this is what I see, this is what I understand, this is what I think is right and yes I'm going to try to convince you that my view is correct however maybe there is some truth to your view as well and I would like to to try and understand that before I reject your view out of hand that is what is anekantavad that is what is the key to why we must try and define things. So, why define? Because without knowing what we are talking about, we cannot know what we are talking about. That is, all of us should be on the same page. All of us should be thinking of the same animal when we use the word elephant. I shouldn't be thinking of a tree trunk while you were thinking of a fan. And that is what definitions help us do well. Another thing that definitions do for us is to help connect the various bits of information that uh, we keep getting all our life and convert that into a body of knowledge useful to us. So that's the other help that we get from definitions. So now let's get on to the definitions important for this part of our presentation about innovation. The definitions of creative or creativity. You can pause the video and read them yourself. Uh, but the key words are imagination, original and ideas. Wikipedia says this, the impetus behind any given act of creation, inventions innovations, compositions, discoveries, etc. 
It is a fundamental human compulsion and largely related to notions of what separates human from animal or machine intelligence. Innovation is defined thus. Oxford says a new method, idea, product, etc. Cambridge and Collins give similar um, meanings. Wikipedia again in this case like the previous case I have modified it slightly. Uh, the meaning is given thus the development of new customer value through solutions that meet new or inarticulate needs. So the keywords here are new customer value and new or inarticulate needs. Creativity is of several types. Only in one of those creative sequences do you find innovation. So let's just look at these various terms which are closely connected. Creativity is, if I simplify the previous slide, is the capability or act of conceiving something original or unusual. This is more or less what the word means. Now discovery pertains to pre-existing phenomena. That is something which is already there. You uncover, you discover something which is covered, something which is not known. So it pertains to pre-existing phenomena. It's a realization. In other words, it's the knowledge that something exists or has happened or does happen and which acts adds substantially to human knowledge. So pre-existing realization and knowledge. These are really my definitions which I concocted for the purposes of this presentation. So they may not be exact, but feel free to blow holes in them so that I can improve these the next time around. Invention is the creation of something new, which has never been made before and which is recognized as the product of or a prototype from some unique insight. So discovery is pre-existing, invention is new. Discovery is realization, invention is creation. Discovery adds to knowledge or uh, is a result of an improvement of human knowledge and invention is just a specific insight. Moving on. Innovation is the implementation of something new. So the keyword here is implementation of something new or different and which is used. That is, it enhances economic value. Finally, improvement is the betterment of something existing which refers to enhancement in quality irrespective of its economic value add. Now these are four words. Uh, which we uh, normally use when we are talking about creativity in a certain area. There is also one more word which is often seen as a relative of these words. That word is improvisation or in Hindi, jugaad. Now the reason I have not put jugaad on the slide here, the reason I have not put improvisation here is because Improvisation is the art of make do. You don't really bother much about the quality because you just need at that point in time something done. So you connect up whatever you can, you make whatever changes you can and make that thing happen. So A, uh, the quality is um, quite quite poor and second thing is it's it's just a knee-jerk reaction which should eventually result in one of these four things and therefore I have not defined it separately so now let's try and see this these four definitions from a different perspective now Brahma the God I'm an atheist, but uh, uh, gods are essentially symbols of something. So when I use the word God, it either means a symbol of a specific thing, like Saraswati is a symbol of knowledge, uh, Brahma is a symbol of creation, um, or Allah is the symbol of the universe which is way beyond a human's 
understanding itself forget about the power to impact so uh, the, the problem with us humans is that we tend to uh, see many of these symbols as reality in themselves which they really are not so coming back to this specific use of the ultimate symbol of creativity for Indians that is Brahma so Brahma has four faces discovery really is a face of science invention the face of technology innovation is product or process development and finally improvement is really about product refresh so when you talk about commerci commercialization of technical creativity these are the four phases and the four faces you can also subdivide these four phases to give you eight phases of technological development from creativity all the way to commercialization this shows you how in various phases science or technology or eventually the production is more important um, take your time reading it I'll move on to the specific examples of our four fundamental phases creativity per se is basically brain work discovery now what is the earth like at one time most people believed that earth is a disk some people believe that earth the disk is actually sitting on top of a giant tortoise and so on and so forth different cultures had their own different creation and cosmological myths M most cultures still do and some of us who are not as enamored of knowledge as some others are still believe in all kinds of stories so discovery was when human beings or at least some of the human beings realized that earth is actually not a disk but a sphere so that is a discovery now invention at some point in time in human history some people realized that it is rather difficult to move large heavy objects from one place to the other at some other point some one or some people realized that if you actually push these heavy objects it takes less effort to do so and move them from from one place to the other they probably also figured out they also probably got an insight that if you actually roll it over then it's much easier you just lift that heavy object over some regular round thing like say logs of wood and then you actually roll that thing over those logs of wood and that takes much less effort and much less power in other words you can actually lift much bigger and much heavier stuff and move it much farther than you otherwise could if you were doing it on something round once that insight was achieved the next insight came by hopefully soon enough when they realized that you don't really need the whole logs what you just need is all the weight to be sitting on something round and that is how the invention of wheel occurred and 
the rest as they say is history life changed completely for us humans that's invention now what is this this is probably the first rupee or a cousin of the first rupee the word comes from Sanskrit for something shapely and for silver as it happened the first rupee was really a shapely piece of silver shapely piece of standardized silver in standardized weight in standardized shape so essentially this was the beginnings of the rupee this was the beginnings of a standardized coin all over the realm of India or most part of India now we will be talking more about this innovation and how in fact money is almost synonymous with innovation money is probably the most important innovation that human beings have ever made this particular innovation this particular rupee was implemented by Sher Shah Suri what you see here is two sets of wheels the first set we saw when we were discussing innovation that came about when somebody had an insight that it's much easier much more effective to use a round wheel like thing to transport objects since then we've come a long way those wheels I guess uh, would break down would not go 30 kilometers or even 30 meters if you're trying to run them at uh, 30 kilometers per hour but the other wheels that you see here they can actually be used at 300 kilometers per hour which is approximately the speed at which a uh, commercial jet lands and other ones the fighter ones often land and take off um, at faster speeds uh, so I think <laughs> Well, um, here's the four slides, the four keywords, uh, discovery, invention, innovation, and uh, improvement on one slide, the four faces of Brahma. Discovery uh, is best talked about by an ISC professor because it's about science, it's about knowledge, it's about realization, it's about pre-existing stuff. Invention is probably best um, spoken about by an IIT or NIT professor and it's about technology, it's about product or prototype, about insight, it's about creation and it's about new stuff. The other two are probably best understood and spoken of by industry honchos innovation really is about product or process development it's about economic value add it's about implementation it's about new or different stuff and improvement as you can see is about something existing it's about betterment and this is how we are able to differentiate between these four things now we will move on to specifically creativity and innovation now creativity requires certain things before it can actually happen you of course need creative thinking skills your capacity to think outside the box is key you need to be able to put existing ideas together into a new combination resources of course you must have knowledge expertise or access to relevant information and finally you need to have the motivation to do it your need or passion to be creative right what does innovation require you need to have an idea or knowledge about what users actually desire or you should have the wherewithal 
to make users believe that they want what you want to sell to them or whatever you have innovated so this is really about marketing you should either know it or you should have the wherewithal to be able to market whatever you have innovated but the two fundamental things which innovation requires is one what is possible with technology at that point in time so creativity but within the ambit of the technology which is possible at any given point in time and the second thing is what is viable in the marketplace are you able to really make uh, addition to the customer value will they be willing to pay you money which is what you need in order to do and practice uh, your innovation in order to implement your innovation so they, these three and more importantly the technology and the market which you require for innovation to happen and now let us get on to some examples of creativity some of these are on the innovation path some not this particular example is it on the innovation path I think so this is a good innovation some people like thin slices of pizza some like thick ones I would definitely pay money for this one good innovation I would say these good examples of creativity mm, innovation probably not this is definitely an innovative example of creativity what are these uh, hiking shoes walking shoes yes what's different about these shoes well these are shoes for which I would definitely very easily pay 20 25 35 45 even 100 percent extra why because the normal shoes have laces and I hate laces why because like many other households in India we don't like to wear street shoes inside our home which means that every time we get into our home I need to take off those shoes and put them on after or at the door this means that I need to oftentimes put them on the shoes while standing with shoelaces with my tummy uh -uh, doesn't work so these shoes with just a string which has got a tightener are absolutely wonderful ideal for me I love them I have paid extra money for those good innovation examples of creativity definitely two of them definitely highly acclaimed works of art the third one definitely in the eyes of the creator I think the third one is beautiful but then are these really innovations no take for example Van Gogh he died in penury so didn't get any monetary benefit he did not create those for reasons his paintings he did not create his paintings for reasons of customer value add he did it for reasons of his own inner need therefore great examples of creativity innovation no different examples of creativity these are all couplets by Ghalib all very very beautiful couplets I love them and interpreted by the artist in in I think a very creative manner but then there's no customer value out there Ghalib lived and died in penury and I'm pretty certain that the artist himself 
does not make any money because of his paintings. Good examples of creativity, not those of innovation. No customer value add. What is this? These are hotel rooms, believe it or not, in Japan. Actually, capsules. These are a bit like if you're familiar with the Indian train system, a bit like second AC or maybe first AC train compartment berths. You get sufficient space to lie down, maybe sit up, put a few things here and there. Very, very innovative use of space. In a little space, you can give people a place to sleep. Great innovation. People pay money for that. Good example of creativity. Innovation. Mm, not really. Another example of creativity. I see these um, these reproductions of paintings every day or almost every day when I go for my morning walk right here in Bhopal the city where I originally made this presentation and where I currently stay here you see three gods being depicted using only four eyes and yet each of them has two eyes good example of creativity like the previous example of sacred creativity these are examples of creativity but not of innovation the top one is the Konak Sun Temple really beautiful world heritage site at the bottom even more beautiful Kailash Temple in the Elora Caves complex humongous huge imposing majestic temples both more impressive for me is the Kailash temple because it's hewn out of solid rock over several generations and they actually the artists actually had to start from the top no possibility no option of rework there you cut something wrong that's it gone you know several generations worth of work gone and really do we even know the names of these artists who 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 created such wonderful works we don't great examples of creativity not quite so of innovation more temples the left hand side bottom is a really beautiful example of creativity and another example of creativity in temple art this is the virupaksha temple in the vijayanagar the hampi temples this temple was actually never consec consecrated but still it's so you know so 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 beautifully so creatively designed each of the pillars that you see in front have got sub pillars in the middle of the pillar and each of those sub pillars when struck give out a particular musical note so you actually hit the various pillars and you get Sare Gama Padhani Sa the whole Sargam the whole the, all the notes of music you can hear in uh, these sub pillars really 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 creative and beautiful innovation not really on top are the Orcha temples again beautiful example the black and white image is a detail on one of the Khajuraho temples really creative I would say a good example a good solution for India's population problem
but somehow we don't seem to quite care for it. I think we should. Great examples of creativity, but not of innovation. Great example of innovation. From where? From the place which gave us the capsule hotels, Japan. They've got too little space. Their stores are very small. They don't have space to waste on huge, humongous, ellip ellipsoid watermelons. So what do they do? Some enterprising farmer figured out that he could actually put an empty plastic box around a little watermelon as it is growing. And when it becomes big, it occupies the space of that box and it becomes an actual cube. Wonderful idea, wonderful creativity and wonderful innovation helps the stores who are the customers of the farmers and also helps the end users. It will be easier for them to store these in their refrigerators. Great example of creativity, great example of innovation. Fifth Symphony, Beethoven's. Beautiful. I love it. A great example of creativity. Innovation? No, not really. But creativity in the field of music can also be innovation. How come? What you have here are the notes, or part of the notes, of the 40th Symphony of Mozart. That was never actually performed during his lifetime and there is evidence to believe that he never got a dime for that creation. It was created as a pure act of creativity. No innovation there. However, that same symphony after 200 years was you may call it lifted, you may call it stolen, you may call it uh, used, was used as an inspiration by a music director who gave a hit number 200 years later in India. Itna na mujh se tu pyaar badha ke main ek badal avara. You may want to listen to both those and compare the two. In case of the Bollywood song, the composer has actually ind Indianized the original genius that was the 40th symphony of Mozart. Mozart symphony, creativity. Bollywood creation, itna na mujh se tu pyar badha, innovation. Well, what are these? These are equations. The top ones are the gravity equations as given by Newton. The bottom ones are the relativity equations as given by Einstein. Two of the most important equations in physics as we know that subject. Are these creativity? Are these innovation? Mm, difficult to say, is it? Not really. Actually, all of nuclear energy is dependent upon Einstein's equations. So, definitely an innovation. A lot of aviation, space uh, engineering, all of that is dependent upon, and a lot more, upon the gravity equations as given by Newton. So I would say these in addition to being pure creative works are also innovative works. All right, so now we come to the question, why need one create or innovate? Well, the answer is pretty simple. If you're happy with the state of affairs, then you don't need to create, you don't need to innovate. You innovate only if you're not happy with the current state of affairs. 
if you feel that there is need to change something then you go around and change it that can only be done through creation through innovation so the answer is pretty simple that's why it's the misfits of the society who are actually the best the greatest creators and innovators why do you need creativity and innovation at work you do because oftentimes you're not happy enough with the results which you're getting currently or at least with the possibilities the potential for future that you currently have so for all kinds of breakthrough results you need to have a new thinking and that's where the importance of creativity and innovation comes in the workplace now how does actually innovation help as you will see how businesses grow is really through steps and every step as you can see is really dependent upon how creative how innovative that company is that company's employees are and most importantly that company's management is fast company had done a study of um, top innovative companies in india and abroad and the ones in india were these top 10 innovative companies as per fc now you will find that there are many many different ways of rating someone's innovation FC has used a certain method Forbes for example has used a different method Forbes has gone purely by share owner value in other words share prices now for that reason I have not actually put the Forbes studies here in this presentation because their studies actually did not take into consideration the fact that certain companies will seem innovative will have increased share prices because all the share prices in that country are increasing so that doesn't really make for very innovative companies but just that the current market situation in that country is supportive of increasing share prices so I have left out th that particular study but we'll go through a few more studies and try and figure out who are at least in some ways more innovative companies and also more innovative nations this is the study again by FC of the worldwide top 15 innovative companies as you can see Apple is the top as you can also see there is not a single Indian company there in that list though there is a Chinese company there now the study this time by booze and company of the worldwide top 10 innovative companies now they have compared the top most innovative companies with their R&D spend worth a watch worth a study moving on now this is another study which uses the Thomas Reuters Derwent World Patent Index so the hypothesis here is that a company which is more innov innovative will be uh, filing more patents and I think it makes a bit of sense uh, they uh, figured out which were the top 100 patent uh, uh, filers. I don't know if it was patent f based on patent filings or patents granted. Uh, but uh, they located the top 100 companies. And then they, uh, you know, tried to figure out which, com which country has uh, more companies which uh, are uh, global innovators no surprise there USA came out on top with 47 percent of the companies in 2012 being in the most innovative of course uh, this is also because of more uh, what shall I say 
patent sensibility or um, IPR sensitivity which is there uh, in USA uh, but certainly you have USA cornering almost half of them Japan another quarter and uh, still half of that that is an eighth with France so and a sixteenth with South Korea rest of the countries especially India is not there at all yet another study country wise uh, was done uh, regarding how innovative companies are in any given country and they took 20 countries to study India came out 15th um, strange or, or really is it strange well notice that uh, the overall innovation uh, figure is arrived at by two specific uh, uh, ratings one is on the basis of the inputs basically inputs by the government so how much is the government supportive of innovation and the next one is innovation performance which is basically the output so the input and the output you find that only three countries are showing performance lesser than inputs France is one but then their overall performance is reasonably good Canada is another and India is another country which in which you know innovative performance the output is actually negative should we not worry about this issue that we have shouldn't we be worried about our entitlement mentality it seems that everything is the responsibility of the government what about our responsibilities for everything we just go back and start blaming the government that they have not done their job should we actually be doing it jaisa dood taisa makhan like milk like butter any population just gets the kind of leaders that they deserve we deserve trash probably because we are trash the moment you say this people get upset but then should we not ever look at our mistakes and always keep blaming other people in this case the government I mean we have seen in the previous slide that the inputs even though low are at least in the positive territory the outputs which we the non-government people are supposed to be delivering are in the negative territory shouldn't we feel bad about it now why don't we innovate anymore I mean historically we've been a very creative country we you know stand up and shout uh, on the rooftops that uh, we uh, invented zero and, and and you look at in philosophic treatises you know it, it isn't just Buddha that uh, we are proud of look at the Upanishads I mean you name it we have got all kinds of brilliance historically available historically you would also find that the GDP that the two countries which had the highest GDP historically before the Industrial Revolution were China and India so what happened why are we there in the dumps now so some questions we need to grapple with is it that we fear change is it that we are hypocrites in the sense that we want others to do everything we want the government to do everything right but we will do everything wrong we will say the politicians are corrupt and yet each one of us will happily pay a small little bribe that is needed to secure reservations in in, in the railways or uh, or when we get caught at the red light we, uh, or or our car is uh, uh, towed away because we have parked it in the wrong place all of us happily pay um, a little bit uh, of money here and there why don't we have the courage to actually face the consequences we had Raja Harish Chandra um, in our history yet all of us are exact opposite is it is is that the reason why we don't uh, innovate anymore 
Are we afraid of our mistakes? What kind of culture do we have? Every time somebody makes a mistake, we shout him down. We, 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 we shame them to no end. Why? Mistakes are our biggest and best teachers. They are our best friends. They are the ones which tell us what we should not be doing. We should actually be encouraging our people to make all the mistakes in the world that they need to make. The only stricture there should be learn from your mistakes. Make a new mistake every time. Just don't make the same mistakes. Just don't make the same mistakes. But no, we don't do that. Is that our problem? Is it that we just talk too much? Thotha chana baje ghana? We have nothing inside because we have been eaten by, uh, uh, by, by all kinds of uh, insects and all we have is just a cover, nothing inside. Therefore, we make so much of noise. Adhajal gagri chalkat jai. We we are not filled to the filled to the brim, and therefore we just jump around too much. Are we afraid of mirrors? What is it? Which one of these is the problem? Or is it that our greatest problem really is that? We are mired in dogma. We are mired in all kinds of dogma that we actually value dogma more than we value knowledge. That we value the icon, the statue of Saraswati more than Saraswati herself. Is it that? It's worth thinking about. It's worth questioning ourselves. And that is where we will go when we start the second part of this, se this series. So this completes the first part of the innovation series. We studied why define and then we went to the definitions. We took some examples of creativity and innovation. We asked the question, why must anyone create and innovate? And then we studied the various innovators that we, that we could, we didn't actually go to case studies, but we just talked about the names. And then we were wondering about the countries that are more innovative and the countries that are less innovative. We were wondering about why that happens. Well, friends, thanks for sitting through this presentation. I know, must have been boring, but thanks for sitting through. Couple of mistakes that I must own up to. One, uh, when I showed that slide about those musical pillars of the temple in Hampi, Vijayanagar Empire Temple. That actually is not the Rupaksha Temple. That's the Vittala Temple. So apologies for that. Uh, secondly, when I was showing the equations, the Newton's and Einstein's equations, I kind of said everything, you know, equations and equation, I kind of mixed up uh, the singular and plural there. So apologies for that. Mm, any other mistakes? I'll put in the description or as a blob somewhere uh, on the video as and when I figure them out or as and when you point them out to me. So this was part one and we'll get to part two soon. Until then, take care and be happy.